Pontiac Fierro You got it Pontiac Hi, thank you for checking out this Fierro fixing video. I'd like to first start by not thanking the sponsor of this video, Pet Boys. I've seen it on TV and on videos, but I never thought I'd actually become a first-hand victim from a store where I visit frequently and I'm recognized by employees when I walk in. I dropped off my 88 formula for an oil change. The Pet Boys employees said they were busy and had to keep it for a day. Long story short is they didn't do an oil change and the car had to be towed home. After taking time over a couple of months, I determined that someone took a very aggressive joyride in the car instead of changing the oil. Unfortunately for me, I have the burden of proof, and it's basically my word against theirs, which they deny any wrongdoing. So I no longer support or promote Pet Boys. I will not give them any more business, and I don't recommend anyone leaving their cars with them for service. I'm not going to call out the Pet Boys I went to, that just happens to be located in Bear, Delaware. Just stay away. Now that I've not thanked my sponsor, this video is on the timing chain on either a 2.8 or the 3.4 engine in a Fiero. The blocks are basically the same, but the engine in the formula happens to be a 3.4 push rod from a Camaro. The 2.8 engine in the 85 and 86 Fieros uses a two-piece oil pan gasket, which is slightly different than the one-piece gasket in the 2.8, 87, and 88 Fiero. So, this may mean that the timing chain cover removal might be slightly different, but the overall video should assist in changing the timing chain in your Fiero. I hope you find this video useful, and as always, please like, share, and subscribe. Alright, I've already gone ahead and taken the liberty of removing the wheel and the uh, wheel well to give us a little bit easier access to the drive pulley, so we're going to go ahead and take that off. All right. It's recommended to use a, an impact wrench of some type to get the drive pulley off because just wrenching on it is just going to spin it. So uh, if you don't have access to any air tools and you like working on cars, it might be worthwhile to just go ahead and pick up a battery powered impact gun. They work good. Uh, this one's rated for 300 foot pounds and that's just enough to take it off. I've already loosened the, the bolt, but just for show, I'll go ahead and uh, finish wrenching it off. All right, to remove the drive pulley, it's gonna be a 19 millimeter, and I've already loosened it, so all I gotta do is basically just wrench, spin it off. And then there'll be four additional bolts. Those are 13 millimeter, and usually you can kind of spin them off as well. A lot of times the drive pulley doesn't really come off that easy, but like I said, I'd already removed it. This is more just for show. All right, now we've got our harmonic balancer puller attached. We're gonna go ahead and slowly wrench it off and until we get the harmonic balancer to pop off. All right, we got the belt off, we got the air conditioning bracket off, we got the harmonic balancer off. Next step is to take the timing chain cover off, which is a, a T40 Torx, as well as a couple of um, 13 millimeter sockets. All right, here's the timing chain cover removed. I just wanted to give you a quick visual on what bolts you can remove and what ones you can leave on. Um, as you can see, you don't need to remove the water pump. Um, some bolts that you don't have to remove are the wire bracket up here. It's a, a 15 millimeter bolt, but you don't have to remove that one. There's a Torx bolt here um, next to the uh, water pump hose. That one you don't need to remove. But this one you do, this bracket you do. There's a 13 out here and then back here I believe is a 15. Uh, then there's some T40 uh, Torx here, 13 millimeter. I believe this is a T45, T40, 
T40 all with the using extension. Um, you can get to them um, without having to take your um, water pump pulley off. So pretty much here, 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 there, here, not that one, and these two, and you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and start working on the timing chain cover. If your water pump is old, now would probably be a good time to replace it. My water pump's only about five years old and maybe five, six thousand miles on it. So I'm going to leave this on, but I will probably paint this uh, before I put it back on since it's no longer in a blue Fiero, it's now in a red one. So I'll probably just paint it black. But let's go focus on the uh, timing chain. All right, taking a closer look at the timing marks, uh, we got the little circle here indicating uh, the small gear and then we got the notch sticking up here on this you can kind of see that it's pretty close um, it's not a hundred percent and here's the slack we have on both sides of the chain so it's not a whole I mean it's a little bit of slack but not a whole lot and there's a little bit of play when I move the, the gears around. Alright, and if I put the damper pulley on just a little bit, there is a little bit of play where I can try and get it straightened up. So maybe I'll try and get it as straight as I can and see how it looks. But overall, with the gears being pretty close to spot on and a little bit of play in the chain, I can make it move one way or the other a little bit. It may or may not be the problem. It's kind of hard to tell, but the gears are starting to kind of uh, round out a little bit. The engine has 107,000 miles. So if it's not my timing problem, it could be a problem in the future at some point. The fact that I've already gotten this far, I might as well go ahead and replace it. The timing chains are pretty cheap. You get the chain and the gear. I've ordered a kit that also includes the chain guard because it's broke so uh, I'm gonna go ahead and order that and we'll get this off and we'll swap it out and cross our fingers alright now we're gonna remove the, the top gear I'm gonna get that from the top and that's just a 13 millimeter socket usually I think these are only torqued around 20 pounds so it's not gonna be a whole lot of effort to get it off um, but you don't want the gear to move so what we're gonna do is we're gonna stop it either by a, a by the flywheel, the torque converter, or uh, I'm going to stick a screwdriver in, kind of wedge it so it can't move, and take it off from there. Take your screwdriver out, gear should slide right out. And here's our chain and our top gear. Now we're going to get a claw puller. We're going to pull the small gear, which I believe shouldn't be too much of a struggle to get out. Just need to pop it out and then uh, we'll change them out with some new gears. Alright, as you can see I got a small pulley puller on the gear, the lower gear. This is a shot from the top and we're going to go ahead and pull that off and should be uh, pretty straightforward. Alright, and there we have the small sprocket. It's a little worn out, but we'll go ahead and replace it. Alright, so now we're going to go ahead and change out our chain guide. Mine's uh, broken in a couple spots and cracked, uh, so I got a replacement. Since we're here, we might as well. Uh, it's an oddball size. I'm coming up with an 11 millimeter to take these bolts out.
All right, here's the new one I got with my chain set. So we'll go ahead and put this one on. All right. Now, fortunately, there's only really one way to put these sprockets back on. You've got a groove here for the smaller one, and then there's a uh, pin for the other one. So you really can't put them on any other way, but you want to be careful that to turn any of these while putting them on. So this one, we're going to press back on. In my case, it just slid right back on, so it was extremely easy. All right, this is the larger sprocket. With this one, again, you can't really put it on wrong because there's a pin right here that goes into this hole here. So there's only one way to put it on. So we'll go ahead and get this on and finger tighten the bolts. All right, as you can see, we got the timing gears on, we got the chain on, the chain guide on. Um, we got our notch here and our notch here, both pointing to the indicators here, kind of pointing at each other. Um, if by chance your, your indicators are not pointing to each other and you have to actually manually adjust your gears, um, I would first start with the top with the chain on and I would grab your uh, harmonic balancer and kind of stick it on and manually turn the gear until you can see the top gear uh, pointing to where it needs to point to be in alignment. Um, then I take your harmonic balancer off, take the top gear off, the chain off, and then use your harmonic balancer again to turn the bottom gear so it's pointing up where it needs to point. So it's marker lines line up with the chain guide and the other gear. And then you can put the top gear and the chain back on. So that's only if you really need to actually manually go in and adjust your gears because you want these pointing at each other. So, All right, so now that we got everything placed in, I'm going to twerk down the um, camshaft gear bolts. I'd only place them on there finger tight because I don't want to accidentally adjust anything or alter anything. So now that everything is set correctly, I'm going to go ahead and torque those down. And they are to be torqued to uh, 15 to 20 pounds. Since I'm reusing the original bolts, I'm going to go ahead and torque them to 20 just to make sure that they are nice and snug. All right, before sealing this up, I'm going to lubricate the chain with some motor oil and then we'll work on uh, putting the timing chain cover on. Just trying to work it in there a little bit. All right, here's our timing chain cover. It took a few minutes to paint it up and get it cleaned up and looking spiffy again. So in order to finish prepping this, went ahead and cleaned off the uh, any residue of uh, gasket material. The inside has been cleaned up a bit. Uh, we're gonna replace the gasket with a new one. Felpro has one. Uh, and then Right along here where the oil pan gasket meets, we're actually going to put some RTV on that before putting this on. So I'm going to go ahead and put some RTV on this and then I'm going to go ahead and try and fit it back into the car. Alright, we got our timing chain cover on. Now we're going to just go ahead and uh, tighten up all the bolts. All 
All right, starting to get a little dark, but we're gonna connect up our coolant hose back on. All right, our coolant hose is all on and clamped up tight. Now we're gonna put our harmonic balancer back on. Decided to put a little bit of oil in, in it to lube it up and hopefully, hopefully let it slide on a little bit better. All right, I got this on pretty good. It's not gonna come off on its own. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my center bolt. I'm gonna thread that in. And once I get that pretty snug, I'm gonna use my wrench to tighten it more. As we're tightening this, it will press the harmonic balancer back into place. And the oil I put on should allow it to slide pretty easily back into place without really spinning it. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna start ratcheting it on. Just holding it with one hand, it's not spinning. And as I wrench it, it's actually pushing the harmonic balancer back on with even equal pressure. All right, I think that's all we're gonna get out of that. So, I got the harmonic balancer all the way on. I'm gonna take this bolt back off and we're gonna put our uh, main drive pulley on. All right, we got our main drive pulley on. Everything's bolted down tight. Uh, all we gotta do is put our air conditioning bracket on, compressor if you have that option, and uh, start buttoning everything up and wrap this project up.